Butterflies and moths aren't doing so well. Even some of our more common species um, are faring badly in the wider countryside. We're not too sure on the reasons why. Climate change is probably a factor, but there's also the massive habitat loss we've seen over the last 50 or 60 years, and also changes in farming practices. Butterflies and moths are massively important to us, not just for the obvious beauty and colour that they bring to the countryside, but to the role they play in the ecosystem too. So for example, butterflies and moths, and of course their caterpillars, are a massively important part of the food chain. We've got bats that predate on moths during the night time, and actually caterpillars make up a, a really big proportion of, of birds' diets. So last night we ran a moth trap, and. Um, Hopefully we've got some really exciting things in there. There's a great unveiling. There's a white ermine moth. And there's another white ermine here. And they've got really fluffy heads. Absolutely fantastic. What a beast. This is a poplar hawk moth. This is called a buff tip. And if you look at it head on, you can see it looks just like a snapped twig. Absolutely cracking moth. When you speak to people about moths, they do get a bad press. Moths, generally, people think that they're boring grey drab things that eat your clothes, but as you can see from what we've caught here, that's far from it. Conserving our butterflies and moths doesn't have to be something that's done on a grand scale. It's something that every person can play a part in. Ditch the pesticides, ditch the decking, and have some good natural features in there, some nice nectar plants. It does matter what you do in your garden. Here we've got a really lovely selection of butterfly, in fact, general pollinator friendly plants. I can hear the buzz of the bees as they're visiting this catmint here that's right out in flower. We've also got lots of other herbs like marjoram and thyme and other types of mint. Also some buddleia, really, really good garden plants that are packed full of nectar. Plant your flowers in blocks of the same type so it's easier for the butterflies to hone in on them. And of course, a sunny open spot is really important for them too. Having some long areas of grass in your garden is ideal for butterfly and moth caterpillars because it provides them with food and shelter. This here on the right is fantastic, whereas the mown area is not so good. Generally being a bit untidy with your gardening is, is really helpful, not only for providing caterpillars with the food plants that they need, because often they feed on long grasses or, or deciduous trees, but also giving them somewhere to shelter and hide away um, in the winter months. We'd love people to take part in the big butterfly counts. Um, this is just where we ask people to spend 15 minutes sitting in their own gardens or a local green space in a sunny time of day and to record the butterflies they see over the 15 minute period. We can't help conserve things unless we know where they are so your records are vital for us to know where they occur and all that information feeds up and then we've got scientists that work on the data to look at how species are faring in terms of their population so the actual numbers of them and actually where they're found. It is really really important to us that we inspire the next generation of butterfly lovers, butterfly enthusiasts, conservationists. Who could not be enthralled by the change of an egg to a caterpillar, to a pupa, to a butterfly or to a moth? It's something that doesn't fail to capture the imagination.